Elon Musk, the eccentric and often polarizing chief twit at Twitter, co-founder of OpenAI, founder of SpaceX, the boring company and Neuralink, and the fourth CEO of Tesla. Yeah, this is Tesla's first CEO, Martin Eberhardt, and him and Elon Musk tell a very different story of who actually founded the company. SpaceX is amazing and, you know, he's done some interesting things with Tesla for sure. I'm not sure why he has to also say that he was a founder when he wasn't. A, a false narrative has been created by um, one of the other co-founders, uh, Martin Eberhardt, who has made it his life's mission to make it sound like he, he created the company, which is false. But here's the thing. Tesla was founded in 2003, and Elon Musk didn't have anything to do with the company until he invested in 2004. So why does Elon Musk claim to be the founder? From Musk ousting Martin Eberhard behind his back, to the lawsuit and battle that's been going on ever since, this is the real story of Tesla. The idea of Tesla was first dreamt up in the early 2000s, when Silicon Valley engineers Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpening, coming off of a recent sale of their ebook reader company, had an itch to create a new startup and shift their focus to electric sports cars. But how does one go from making ebook readers to electric sports cars? Well, Mark Eberhard was going through a divorce, and as any filthy rich 40 year old in a midlife crisis would do, he decided he wanted to buy a sports car. But he couldn't justify buying a gas-guzzling car being an environmentalist, and electric cars at the time were, well, nothing to bat an eye at. This soap bar with a drag coefficient of only 0.19 clearly places function over form, especially at the rear, where the roofline mimics styles that even the French won't buy anymore. So, Martin approached his old friend from their ebook reader days, Mark Tarpity, and pitched him the idea of building an electric sports car. And in 2003, they began working on what would eventually become the Tesla Roadster. But while knowing the last successful American car startup was Ford, founded in 1903, they realized they couldn't do this alone. So they partnered up with two companies, AC Propulsion, who already had a high-performance electric car in the market called the T0 but didn't have mass market appeal, and Lotus, who had a car with market appeal but no electric power. And Martin knew combining the two was the recipe for success. You can have a car that's quick and you can have a car that's electric, but having one that's both is how you make electric cars popular. And with that vision, Martin came up with a name for the new company, Tesla Motors. But by 2004, the company was in need of some serious funding to keep the dream alive. This is where Elon Musk comes into play. Yeah, he's also had a hair transplant since then, but it's not like it bothers me or anything. Anyway, Musk had just come off of selling PayPal to eBay, making him a casual $176 million. And after meeting with Martin Eberhard and Mark Tarpening, he decided to invest $7.5 million into Tesla. By 2008, Musk had invested $70 million in Tesla and was the chairman of the board. But that's not to say he was very happy with the direction the company was going in. Throughout the development of the Roadster, Musk saw many issues in the choice of manufacturers, and the actual manufacturing itself, including large gaps in body panels, which might sound familiar. But the biggest issue was with the choice to use a two-speed transmission instead of a single-speed one, which essentially bricked the car after hitting 60 miles per hour. Elon Musk firmly blamed all these issues directly on Martin Eberhard, and all the issues culminated in a delay of releasing the Roadster, which was promised in 2006, but didn't even begin being manufactured until 2008. Yeah, that also might sound familiar. Tesla removes all Cybertruck production date information from the website. However, in 2007, while the Roadster was being developed, Musk arranged a meeting with the Tesla board behind Martin Eberhard's back and made the decision to oust him as CEO. Musk called Eberhard to let him know the board had agreed to demote him, which came as a shock to Eberhard, who said, I didn't get to know what they said. I didn't get to defend myself. I felt totally stranded. Eberhard chose to resign from the company, along with co-founder Mark Tarpening. But the story doesn't end here. In 2009, Mark Eberhard sued Elon Musk, claiming Musk had disparaged him in various media outlets, and that Musk had set out to rewrite history, falsely claiming he was the founder of Tesla. The lawsuit also gave a further window into the tension between Musk and Eberhard, including that although Eberhard was promised the second roadster ever produced, he never received it. And when Tesla eventually did send him a roadster, it had been crashed into a truck before being delivered, almost completely totaling the vehicle. In the end, they agreed to a settlement, allowing Elon Musk to call himself a co-founder alongside of Martin Eberhard, Mark Tarpening, and two other original Tesla employees. To this day, tension between the two still remains, with Musk jumping at any opportunity to diminish Eberhard. He's 
the worst person I have ever worked with. And that is saying something. Okay, yeah. I've worked with some real assholes. And Eberhard not understanding Musk's need to do so. The fact remains that Tesla wouldn't be the company it is without Eberhard, who thought of the idea of an electric car company in the first place, or Musk, who led the company to massive success. But it does seem a bit unfair that Martin Eberhard has been completely overshadowed by Elon Musk, getting little to no credit for the company he founded. While Eberhard's Tesla was crashed into a truck, Musk's original Roadster will be floating around in space for millions of years, securing the association between Elon Musk and Tesla Motors forever.